art show in March. This will be an art show all about um, food here in Pueblo. Any piece of art that you have that speaks to food and Food Art of Pueblo is welcome to join. It's a $10 entry fee if you join through the Pueblo Food Project. If for whatever reason uh, you don't have $10 to spare but you have artwork to share, the Pueblo Food Project is happy to cover your entry fee. This will be a judged competition, so there will be prizes involved. Uh, Springside Cheese has already talked about doing a cheese carving event. Um, at one of the days the show is up, so that should be really exciting. If you want more information about the art show, or if you're an artist, or if you work with students, please pass around the message. We're trying to collect as many pieces as possible. We need a minimum of 50, and we can submit a maximum of 144. And the work of art can be as big as 20 feet by 16 feet. <laughs> So don't hold back if you're feeling so inspired. Uh, yeah, I think that is the bulk of what I had to share for my very brief coordinators <laughs> update. And now I would love for us to tap into our working groups um, for updates from them. So let's start with economy. All right, I think we had a really productive um, and constructive constructive uh, meeting in January. And really what we're doing in food economy is just trying to build momentum to go into this year and start accomplishing our goals. Um, so we've, we, we spent a lot of the fall kind of talking about things but not moving forward and we were getting kind of stuck in the process rather than progress. So that's kind of with all of our projects where we are. Um, but looking around the corner, um, watch my notes just disappeared. So we took a di deeper dive into the market scans and, and we're talking about ways to get better um, responses from the community. How can we listen to our community better um, or in a different way? And then we also talked about, we had a missed opportunity with a company that wanted to come to Pueblo and it through many channels wasn't able to make it happen. And so, um, having that conversation around missed opportunities and what we can learn from it so that we can draw those kind of companies to our community. Um, and then moving forward, you know, we, we're working on this food hub. And what I'm really excited about this year is just to see we have all these wonderful pieces in our community to come together and make a nice flow for folks who want to grow and scale their businesses. Um, we're talking about categorizing businesses in different ways, different food entrepreneur businesses. Um, so that we can address those needs. Um, is there, food economy folks, is there anything I left out or that you wanna add to that? All right. So that's kind of where we're at. Monique, can you think of anything I left out? Yeah, Rachel from Jojo Sriracha will be convening a small group to really dig into the business support program. So look out for an email from us, even if you don't participate in the food economy group, but you're super excited about this one little niche of the conversation, um, that, that is going to be a task force that comes together and really digs in on that work. So that'd be the only thing I'd have to add. Okay, how about environment, Dr. Jim? Sure, can you hear me? Yes. Good, good, good. I typically start talking and nobody hears me. Um, well, we're starting to get a little speed going and uh, in part it's because I, the work we're doing with Maggie is, is helped me get a sense of pacing and scheduling the agenda so it's more effective. So that's extremely exciting and I think uh, we'll only improve and I'm sure that's true for the other groups. Uh, we did many of the usual things. We talked about sun, soil, et cetera, but probably the most uh, interesting thing we did, we started to set up having monthly uh, kind of expert or different aspects of the environment, have them do presentations. So this week or this month, we had Alan Ward, who is from Pueblo uh, Water, um, really a neat fellow. And, and he, I, sh I should have taken better notes because he tried to explain to us how a uh, an acre foot of water turned into another volume and turned into another volume that made it more interesting. Maybe I can get that uh, 
boiled down or distilled to share. Um, uh, and and uh, I think we all learned a lot from that. And it's a complicated, well, water, as everybody knows, is complicated. So that was a good place to start. Uh, we have other people in the water area that we'll bring in. Uh, one of the uh, next steps that we decided is that next month, um, we want to look more at uh, the human aspect of food production, meeting the workers and the workforce. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, when you look at other food projects that, that in the environmental component, the workforce is a discrete entity uh, to be considered, not just water and air and soil um, or animals. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. I already have a couple of uh, speakers lined up potentially. And uh, so we're starting to get a little better. Well, it sort of goes to baseline things because these people have data for us, but it gives us broader understanding. Um, and I, I look forward to having that component advertised through an early agenda to the other people that have come that are part of occasionally our group so we can get attendance up and an expectation of learning each time um, we're still trying to figure out exactly what the small project we can get in a three meet three month arc um, we have a few ideas uh, but uh, at least i think we have at least i have a greater grip on how to use that hour efficiently I think we, it seemed like we were very busy and we finished with one minute left. So that was a good thing. Um, it's just getting exciting to have, you know, the, in order to build a coalition around the environment, we have to have a lot of experts because we don't know it. And then from that, we can figure out some discrete things to start getting done. Um, uh, and I, I thought it went well. I enjoyed it for the first time, really. It didn't intimidate me too much. Thank you, Jim. How about Lindy with Access? Yes. Uh, Ooh, Lindy, we can't quite hear you. Um, our food access group, um, how to recruit volunteers um, for food pantries and other food access. So we've created a form where agents, uh, organizations or groups could submit something that will go on Pueblo Food Project's calendar. So somebody looking for a volunteer opportunity could go there and see all of the options. Um, so you'll be hearing more from us soon on how to submit the, those. Um, we, are, we started a subcommittee for the farmer's market. So we can um, make that an exciting option for both you know, local food to be sold and provided here, um, but also for the different members of the community to access food, um, education, other resources in the community, and everyone can feel like the farmer's market is for them. Um, so we'll, we're looking for input on that as well. Even if you're not a part of the food access working group, you can let me or Monique know um, how to get involved in that. We'd love all of your ideas. And um, our video project for SNAP and WIC and reducing ambiguity around those for both members of the community who may want to access or need access to those programs and don't know what it's all about, but also for our community overall to understand um, how those programs work and their benefit, not just to the individuals, but to the whole community and the whole food system. All Thank right. you. Thank you, Lindy. Um, I will provide an update for Dr. Kelly, who was here but had to jump off. She's participating in an equity and resilience conference. Um, so we're excited to have a, a readout from her at the next meeting. But for the Food and Farm Literacy and Education Working Group, this group is really um, responsible for that art show. Um, so you'll probably be hearing from a number of us to get that artwork in and to um, create some materials to have at the gallery so that we can really use it as an opportunity to introduce the Pueblo Food Project. We also launched our first um, class with Natural Grocers. 
So we had a community learning opportunity. Natural Grocers did a presentation specifically for the Pueblo Food Project on stress fighting foods. That class went over super well. Um, Roxanne, the nutritionist at Natural Grocers was really excited for those who participated. Your $5 gift certificate and um, materials are on their way. They'll be in the mail, hopefully by Friday. And we have another class lined up based on the voting from this group in December, we will do um, a detox 101. So that will be the class for February. Uh, what else is coming out of that group? Oh shoot, am I missing something? I think those were the heavy hitters for food farm literacy and education this month. The um, advocacy working group is experiencing a leadership gap. So if you are excited about being a co-chair for one of the working groups and you are into um, policy and advocacy and, and getting the word of the project out there, then please contact me. We'd love to have you consider being a co-chair for that working group. In our meeting last week, it was a working meeting. We outlined every single representative we have in our community, starting at the federal level and working all the way down to our individual county, county commissioners. We assigned each member of our working group to a representative and actually multiple representatives because the group came hard. And we are reaching out between now and our next meeting to each one of those representatives and introducing them to the Pueblo Food Project, sharing our talking points, asking for a phone conversation, just letting them know who we are and what we are up to. So we're excited to report back next month on how those conversations went. Let's see, I will now hand it over to Megan to do a sun soil water update. Hi everyone. Um, so we will be having our executive briefing on February 18th at 3 p.m. Um, if you haven't gotten information about that, um, you will. Uh, we have, um, I've just posted something on social media on our um, Facebook and Instagram. So if you haven't seen it, please go share it. Please go like it. Please go do something with it. I would really appreciate it. Um, just help get the word around. Um, there'll be lots of stakeholders there. We have um, finalized the panel, which will be Liz Martino from Martino Cattle Company, Kim Bowman, um, who is the executive director of Posada, Keith Hines, the president of Springside Cheese and Garrison Ortiz, who is a public count a Pueblo County Commissioner, and it's gonna be moderated by Steven Trujillo. Um, and as you guys know, we're gonna have a bigger um, Sun Soil Water Conference in November. Um, this is the small executive briefing for its stakeholders. Um, so in November, we will have a really great, huge summit, but we're also creating a little teaser that will be played at the new, at the February one. Um, so this past two weeks, we got some film done from Goal Academy and that'll be done in a few weeks and you'll get to see it. Um, on February 18th, I'm really excited. Um, we got to work with some awesome people at Goal Academy and you're gonna see a few of your peers um, on the big screen um, in a few weeks um, talking about the bigger uh, Sun Soil Water Summit um, later in the future. Um, I'm also developing a logo for the Sun Soil Water um, Summit, which I think is looking pretty cool right now, but you guys will get to see it later. Too bad you can't see it now. Um, and that's about all I have. Monique, did I miss anything? Crushed it. Nailed it. Thank you, Megan. Megan is living two, two lives. She's deep in on the food project and she's also deep in on skills. So eventually she'll be the mayor. Watch out. It was just brought to my attention in a, in a chat. Um, thank you, Tom, uh, around a new kind of project that's creeping up in the community uh, called belly boxes. They're belly boxes or blessing boxes. Um, there's a gentleman, maybe you saw the article in the newspaper from Pueblo West who created this fabulous box and has just been stocking it with shelf stable food for members of his community to come by and, and grab. And, um, you know, as, as it happens, you plant a seed and watch it grow. Many others in the community are looking for belly boxes in their um, neighborhoods. And so the Pueblo Food Project it called a conversation with kind of the folks who are leading the charge here. And we're trying to figure out the best way to coordinate, um, whether that's sponsoring boxes, whether that's creating an inventory list or going around and doing box cleanup to remove all of the things that people never take out of the box. 
Um, so if you are interested or if you've been looking for a belly box in your neighborhood, please shoot us a, a note or a text. We have another conversation tomorrow to just kind of check in on, on where we are to see if there's a way that the community can come together on this. Um, DM, I see you have a hand up. You're on mute. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Yes, um, I'm new to Pueblo and I heard about the blessing boxes and I've been driving around filling the boxes with food and clothing and sanitary things. Um, some of them are kind of small. They have books in them, so there's not a lot of room to, um, to put food in, but the one on Grand, and city center um, is, a, is a great size. You can put a lot of food in that. So I just wanted to give feedback that a lot of people came together to uh, fill these boxes. Yes, thank you for sharing that experience. And if you really wanna go the extra mile, the blessing box or the, we need to pick a name. Some say blessing, some say belly. Blessed belly box, maybe it's a triple B, I don't know. Um, we have a group uh, at the Arts Alliance who every Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. is handing out hot cocoa to the homeless. And they are looking to kind of expand that offering. Maybe, um, you know, maybe it's a soup one week or maybe we have a big crock pot of chili beans or maybe we throw down some pizza and we have a little pizza party there on the street. Um, so if you're interested in getting more involved and in potentially sponsoring a lunchtime meal or, or snack, um, then, then that's something that we can consider and look into. Tom, I see you have a hand raised. Yeah, I just, I just want to mention, I do have one in my front place. Um, I've gotten a lot of donations where I had to go out and get a shelving unit to collect everything because it won't go into everything doesn't now fit out there so this is one of the issues you're going to have to look at when you're doing this as well do you have storage space at your house um, to do something like this as well because it can't just sit on the street because I have dogs that roam around it's mm -hmm. not a good, thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good point okay thank you for that we are going to do our last update and I'm, I'm super pumped to share this with you. I'm hoping it all works out. My last piece of technology voodoo magic. And this is, um, oops, here we go. I have this, go away. This is Lolo from the Youth Council. Hi, I'm Eloise Natalia Armijo. I am a part of the Pueblo Food Youth Council. I also go to East High School and I'm a senior this year. Um, Things that we have been working on as a group is for Valentine's Day, we have been working on fruit baskets to give to 500 students in need and to show them how good fruit can actually be. We have also been taking field trips to local businesses around town just to see what the Pueblo food system can actually be like. And then we have also been collecting data from our peers just to see what they think of our food system. And we made a mural and we would like to see if an artist that we've been interviewing would help us put it on the levee. And wow. And I hope you all stay safe during these trying times and thank you for listening. Wow. Yeah. I'm sure a little too quick. <laughs> um, yep, so we will have a youth council member give an update each meeting moving forward. Um, Lolo was being a little modest. The survey that they've shared out has over 100 respondents. So over 100 young people have participated in the survey that they've authored and pushed out. We've interviewed four artists and we've narrowed it down to our top two to get this mural on the on the wall and the the youth council wrote the project plan and the grant application for these 500 fruit baskets and this was all their idea going out to mm -hmm. elementary schools that they um, selected based on personal experience so 
shout out to them. They're crushing it. Um, but I'm, I'm excited for y'all to, to meet them one by one through these um, virtual updates. Mm. Okay, we have about five minutes left and now would be a great time if you have um, your own announcement to share, your own request for volunteers or support in any way, if you have an appreciation to share with the group, if you wanna say hi to a new face you haven't seen in the meeting before, any, anything like that, now is the time, the floor is yours. Monique, I'm going to jump in. This is Brandy. Um, we have our food distribution that was scheduled for today. We moved it to tomorrow due to inclement weather. Um, so I know there's a lot of folks on here that was sharing that information for us, um, but the distribution will be tomorrow due to the weather that we had today. And it will be at 2300 East 10th Street, the former Span Elementary, and it will be at 12 p.m. Um, we will also be giving out books. So books will be available for children, middle school to high school age, as well as adults. Um, so definitely, if you have time, go through and uh, get you a food bag as well as a book. Thank you. Right on. Thank you, Brandy. I just wanted to share a quick story that, um, I don't know, like a week and a half ago, we were tabling at Save a Lot and uh, what I pretty sure was, well, yeah, no, a homeless gentleman came up to me. He's asking questions about resources. And um, I, my brain went completely blank. And so I called Derek. And I'm like, this guy's hungry. What do we do? Food. Send it. Derek goes, send him to Tom's house. So he gives me Tom, you know, reminds me of Tom's address. He goes, send him to the box. And then we ended up calling Brandy. And then, but and getting the guy is the, and his friends some significant help. But I just wanted to let you guys know it's working. It really is people. I mean, it's, you know, it, it, the word is getting out there. I mean, it, you know, it, it, it was just very cool. I just want to share that. Any other comments, thoughts, appreciations? I am going to give an appreciation to all of the new faces in this meeting. I know for some of you, this was your first time joining us and you jumped in at a, at a heavy hitting time. We did a lot of group activity today. We switched up our um, meeting style to really get people's bright, juicy coffee brain going early in the morning. And I just really appreciate you joining us and, and sticking with it through these activities. Um, I'm, I'm very excited that we were able to have you and really hope that you'll be back. Okay, last piece of business in the chat right now is a feedback form. We're starting evaluations of all of our working groups after each meeting. We're gonna continue to do evaluations of this larger group meeting. It's very straightforward, two questions, rate the meeting one to five, provide some feedback. Um, not only is this to help us help you help us help you, but we also need to start tracking our progress for our grant funders. So if you have 30 seconds to spare, um, please go ahead and click that link. Otherwise, you get two minutes back unto your day. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And we're back on next month. All right, Pueblo Food Council members, keep this Zoom line open. We will stay right here and we'll get started in about 10 minutes. All right, bye everybody, thank you.